today. We have color scripting. So I'm going to show you some color scripting examples. We're going to take our storyboard that we've been working on and we're going to add color to the scenes so that we can understand the mood of what that scene is, right? Which is what color scripting kind of helps us do. Uh, and but then we'll show kind of what we're at in progress and whatnot. And then uh, when Thursday, Thursday is a lot of Scotta day. If you've been to the website, I even did a little video intro for Lotta Scott Day for our friend and, and producing icon, Mr. Scott Ryder. So Lotta Scott Day is going to be fun. We're going to draw him realistically. We're going to caricature him, and then we're going to put him in a one-frame cartoon. Uh, and then Friday, <laughs> yes, and then Friday, um, we are going to do Ultimate Art Tag 3. The gift that keeps on giving. What's a little bit different about this? Well, in in our usual collaborative effort to build on to everybody's drawing, I figured because it's the end of May, we've been doing this for like nine weeks now, it would be cool if we did kind of like a random giveaway stuff. So what I had, and I've already have uh, Amelia, Megan, Jax, Max and Des, Sophia and Emily, Kat and Angie so far that I've seen through email have already registered. It's just name, uh, address, email address if you're under 18 your parents are cool with it before you do that so you can register for that for friday and then what's going to happen is we're going to i'm going to just give away stuff at random right i'm going to have like a random number generator and or something to that effect scott's going to help me monitor it you guys are going to put something in the chat and then we're going to see who gets the closest and then you get to pick something i'm going to do this every now and then so there'll be chances to win and it'll be like one person gets a chance to win at a time so what kind of stuff could you win? Uh, Friday, I'm going to go down with a Chuck Jones Big Draw Batsuit Wiley Coyote t-shirt. I believe I have medium mm -hmm. large and extra larges. So you could win one of those. Um, I would do a sketch. Also, I'm going to throw in some sketches. So on, on animation paper, you can pick your favorite Looney Tunes character like we did Cadet on Saturday for... Uh, for another class that I did, All right? So you can pick whatever character you want and I'll sketch that out on animation paper for you and then I'll send it to you. Or, and I'm only doing one of these, my, one of my test prints for this little guy. So I don't know if you know who this is, right? But you should. So Baby Yoda! It is Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one of these guys to the list and depending on what you get picked, you might win this and I will ship this to you. So, yes. All right, so let's get on with the business at hand. So Amin has his hand up. Yes. Uh, yeah, I have a question. So after May, are we still gonna be doing this through summer? I hope so. Um, um, I, I would I would say yes. We are going to be doing this through the summer, so we'll have some more Yay. stuff. Um, I have not gotten into what I'm going to do for summer. I know I'm going to take a little time off in June so that I can go uh, unplug. And uh, but yes, summer programming. We'll keep it up on the site, so you'll be able to see just like you do on like yesterday when we, or on Sunday when we put out the e blast. You'll be able to check that out. Um, so definitely look forward to that. And. Uh, so where's the link that we sign in for, for that um, raffle? So for the raffle, if you go to the chuckjonescenter.org in the week, May week four programming, like you did to get into today's class, on the Friday class, you'll see a little form at the end of that. And all you got to do is have, if you're under 18, have your parents, make sure you got their permission, pop in email address and name, and then I'll get an email, and then you'll be registering. Like I said, I've got Amelia, Megan, Jax, Max, and Des, Sophie and Emily, and Kat Angie so far. Um, before I came in. So if there's something that's happened since then, that's fine. And I've got from like Chile, right, all the way to Canada, all kinds of stuff. So that's kind of cool. All right, let's get into the cartoon. So Mr. Scott Ryder, sir, would you mind rolling the number one, ladies and gentlemen, this, this is considered the best cartoon ever, right, is What's Opera Doc? Yes. All right. So that is considered by the Cartoon Guild, or I forget what it is, a very prestigious firm, to be the best animated short film of all time, right? It's based off an opera, which is why it has uh, the music and stuff that it does and kind of the action with Broomhilda. And why did I show that one at the, uh, am I still on mute? No. 
No? No. All right, good. So that pop-up was wrong. All right, so anyway, uh, why did I show that cartoon at the beginning to color scripting? Because as you see in the film, right, as action gets super intense and you've got like reds and like flashing yellows and oranges, right, dark colors and it's contrasting, it's, it's very, the action's very intense, therefore the color is very intense. And when you get into moments where it's a little calmer and everything's all sweet and lovely, right? It's softer pinks and whites and, and soft grays and greens and stuff like that. So when we're gonna get into color scripting, I'm gonna show you some examples here of what you're doing right now in your cartoon. The whole idea behind color scripting is to figure out what colors in your scene help tell the story. So if it's a softer moment, like what we saw in What's Opera Doc when he's coming off the back of the horse for the first time. It's a softer moment. There's softer pinks and greens and stuff like that. That wouldn't really be somewhere we would have like intense, hard flashing colors and stuff like that. So as you're, as remember I went, said keep all of your stuff. So I've got my storyboard here for my flower sack because that's what I'm gonna use today for my color scripting. In the idea meaning, as I can take you through it, how does color, impact how the story is being told. So when my flower sack little dude is in his, at the very beginning, and he's looking off to, you know, across the street and he sees the other female flower sack, right? He's kind of just smitten. So there's softer, you know, colors, maybe that like pinks and lavenders and stuff like that, right? There's this whole sense of love, right? And then as he's, as he ventures and sees what's in front of him, it's a little darker, so it's kind of it's raining outside. There's giant puddles and stuff like that. He's got to figure these things out. That's an obstacle. It's not. He's going through a struggle. So my colors are more uh, cooler, right? In my blues and my grays and stuff like that. And at the end, you know, as things warm up, we get back into those softer tones. So that's what I want you guys to do here as we get into color scripting. I'm going to show you some examples from Pixar. So the book today is called The Art of Pixar, if you can see that, all right? It looks like this. So The Art of Pixar, this is all of their color, is all about their color scripts. So The Art of Pixar is a fantastic book. And if we can go overhead, thank you, sir. All right, so I'm gonna show you what we mean by color scripts. So if we look in Toy Story, Right, so this is from the very very beginning of Toy Story, and as you can see, we've got the opening sequence in uh, in Woody's house, and then we get into kind of where they go into Sid's yard, right, and they see across things get a little darker, it's a little scarier. So the warmer, brighter colors are friendly, or it feel great. I get into the darker colors, and things get a little scarier, right. And then if you look too specifically, once they get into Sid's house, right, the colors are not friendly at all, right? And there's a lot going on. Very dramatic lighting. It's not necessarily soft lighting. Like, look at how things are backlit. Look at harsh angles. So even as you're doing your color scripts, right, we're thinking about how we're lighting that. Is it soft lighting or is it very high contrast? So here's another one, Bugs Life, which is one of my favorite Pixar films. Super friendly in the beginning, right? Everyone's gathering the stuff. And then as stuff goes south, right, because Flick ends up launching all the food over the top even though he meant well it gets darker which is in our cooler tones right and the lighting ben, is ben are you able to move the camera closer there's a request sure how's that better so we'll get so you can see as we kind of move through the the more dramatic lighting right harsher angles the the more tense the situation and then this is obviously friendlier so there where all the the flick comes back with the bugs you know, that he finds the warriors and this is the whole parade for that. So this is kind of, this is to give you an idea of what we're doing in our color scripts. So I'm gonna flash through a few pages. Monsters Inc, right? So here's color scripts from Monsters Inc. And these are rough sketches of characters too. This, I mean, as you can see, uh, they're not super detailed, right? But we do have an idea of how things are lit and that kind of thing. So this is what I wanna get into today. Finding Nemo also has a lot of great Cir yes, circus bugs. You're right, Carolyn. They are circus bugs. So Ratatouille is the last one. And here's some color scripts from Ratatouille, right? Which are super awesome. So you kind of see how things are lit. So if you are guys are into animation and are checking out storytelling and how to use color, right? How that like uh, 
progresses your story. The Art of Pixar. Ooh, there we go. The Art of Pixar. I highly recommend it. You can find it. If you got it for purchase, maybe you got a birthday coming up on Amazon or check out your local library. They probably have it. And then you can rent it from there. So here's what I want to get started. This is, remember, I had the same sheet that we used for storyboarding. So when I said, go ahead and download that for class, um, Scott, let's go front facing camera. Um, that's what we'd be using today. We're going to do that where we sketch that out. Now, if you kept your storyboards, right, you can mimic your, so I have some mine loosely sketched out. You can use your storyboards and do color over them if you want, or you go right into the color. I'm going to use a mix between color pencils and pastels. Use whatever colors you have available. The whole idea is how you're telling the story. So in that scene that you're seeing, right, in each frame, let's go back to overhead, in that in each frame, like I've got my warmer colors here, this is kind of neutral, right, and then this is where it gets into the more purples and pinks and reds and and he's smitten, right, and then as I go along, my, my colors will start to change based on how the story goes. So I'm gonna start with this and how the color in my story works. Now, as we get started here, does anybody have a question about color scripting and how we're going to use color. If you do, you can pop up a blue hand. If not, let's dive right in. And so I'm going to start off in my first frame. So you have your, you have your sketches from your storyboard for reference. Also, if you changed up your boards, like I know, like I've changed mine up a little bit. Sophie, I think has changed hers up some. Um, that's totally fine. Use whatever your current board is. So I'm going to get into some browns, right? We're going to start neutral a little bit. And what I'm pulling off again, you're, you're taking your storyboard and you're, and you're placing color to it. It does not have to be super detailed either. So as you saw in what we were looking at with the Pixar samples, it's not super detailed. It's, we want to really get the mood of that frame. So color scripting also helps. Like if you guys like to paint, we draw whatever we want, or um, are we supposed to draw what you're drawing? Well, no, you draw whatever you want in your cartoon. This is my cartoon and what I'm working on. So you go ahead and draw like your cartoon that, and that, and that's a good question. So if you are if you are jumping onto this and you have not taken maybe one of the classes that we've done in make your own cartoon. Today, we're, we, we've done storyboarding. We've kind of written our story out in a couple of sentences. We worked on some character design and some background layouts. Um, today, we're gonna be taking our storyboards and adding colors. So if you're jumping in for the first time, um, you can either draw what I'm drawing if you don't have a story idea kind of ready, or you can, if you've got a, a cartoon that you've always wanted to do and you've got some ideas on it, you can use that for your color strips. So remember too, like when we're color means things, right? So it's got positives and negatives. Red can be a positive and it can mean love, right? And, um, you know, just excitement, but it can also mean fear and danger. So if you're pairing up reds with blacks and darker colors like that, maybe that's more of like, there's a tense situation going on. Um, if you're pairing it up red with like purples and like warm, like friendlier colors, uh, it, you're going into the kind of that, that love and that excitement atmosphere. Right, there you go, buddy. All right. Also remember when you're using color, and you're doing shadows or shading not to just use the same uh, like color so if you're doing a light brown not just to use a dark brown uh, you can use contrasting colors it makes more interesting shades and tones than just using a lighter or darker version of that color Let's pop that down some Right, so I'm I've got like a beige, and then I'm going over it with a with a blue. So I'm cooling down that shadow just a bit here for my my background. Well, 
what I love about color scripting is, and, and looking at color scripts for film is, it's almost like every single piece is a piece of art, right? Like a painting. And a lot of color scripts nowadays are done digitally. So people are doing them on like in Photoshop with, you know, in studios and stuff like that. But what I really come to appreciate is the stuff um, that they used to do like back in the early days of Pixar and, you know, even Disney in the, um, in the late 80s, 70s, 80s, up and through the 90s, which was uh, pastels. They would use pastels a lot, pastel color pencils, that kind of thing. And they looked, to me, stunningly gorgeous. So if you're able to get, for instance, the art of um, Finding Nemo has some beautiful sketches in their, on their color scripts. All right, so. Again, remember to not just to use the same color. If you look at artists like Monet and Impressionists and how they use color to create um, shadows and or just you know contrasting colors and not just a darker version of that color. Rarely ever will you see that, especially when people do like underpaintings and they'll start with one color, like a red, and then they'll build their painting on top of that. All right, and Scott can monitor this one. Does anybody have a favorite cartoon, like an animated film or short film? And just pop up your hand and then we'll, Scott can unmute you. Um, a favorite short film or animated feature that you absolutely loved the color in, like the color was just intense and it wraps you in. I'll start with mine is, and then we'll go to, I see Kat's got her hand up. Mine is Aladdin. I love, in the original 1993 Aladdin, I love the color in that film. I think it is absolutely stunning. It's one of my all time, it is my all time favorite animated film. All right, so Scott, who do we got? Cat. Cat, what, what film or animated short do you just absolutely love the color in? So, um, let's see, I watched it recently. The Forky Ask the Question one, um, the color on that, I found to be very interesting. Like, I liked it. Which film was that again? Forky, the Forky Asked the Question animated short. Okay, nice. So you, love, you just love the color in that film? Yeah, there are several, but yeah. Nice. All right, who else has their hand? Thank you, Kat. Samantha. Samantha, what film do you absolutely love the color in? Um, it's called Burn E. It takes place in during Wally, -E and it's on Disney Plus. It's really funny, and it's great. The and, color is good too. Yep, the color is so. Bernie is a little robot on the outside that fixes the lamp, that fixes the lights, right? And he's on the. Yep, and he got stuck out there, and it's very, <laughs> I think it's very interesting. Absolutely, I love that short. So there, so to, to piggyback before we go to the next person, to piggyback real quick, if you look at Wally -E and uh, if you've got Disney Plus or if you've got the DVD, they have some fantastic extras on filmmaking, right? So it's on, on how they make the films and, and, and uh, stuff like that, the process of it. I highly recommend if you have Wally -E or access to Wally, -E, either the DVD or the digital version in the extras is great, um, great segments on filmmaking. All right, where are we going to next, Scott? Heather Rose and Liliana. Liliana and Heather Rose. What film do you absolutely love the color in? Uh, I think I like the Beauty and the Beast. I was going to say Little Mermaid. Yes. So fun fact, right? Little Mermaid is the last animated film that Disney did that was hand inked and painted. Did you know that? Yep, it was once they, once they, uh, when they did that film, they would, they hand inked all the lines and then they painted all the cells. And it was the last film they did that. And if you watch that one compared to Rescuers Down Under, which was the next film that came out, they used uh, CTP, I believe, computer to play, um, where they digitally colored things. So you'll notice like shadows and arms are softer 
Whereas in like Little Mermaid, shadows are a little harder because it's just a painted line. I love Little Mermaid. And then Beauty and the Beast broke all kinds of ground. I love the color in Beauty and the Beast. I think it's fantastic. There's another one where the color scripts are absolutely tell a great story. All right, Scott, where are we headed next? Good, good choice, Katie. Um, I like the Lion King because like in the battle scene, there's a lot of like dark colors. Yes. We're talking like the original Lion King in 1994 yeah. or are you talking the new one? The original one. Yes, good man, the original one. Oh. So I totally agree. That film has some amazing color. And when Scar fights Simba, you're talking about that on the rock, on yeah. Pride Rock. Yeah, there is some amazing color in that sequence that really you feel the intensity of the situation. All right, Scott, where are we have Simeon? Simeon, what's up, buddy? I'm good. I had some ones that I thought uh, were my favorite. So I like Zarafa and uh, the original Curious George. Nice. So it was the original Curious George, it was animated, right? Not, not live action mix? It was animated. Animated. That's right. That's got some awesome color in it, too. Very cool, man. And what was your first pick, Zahara? Zarafa. Zarafa. Now, tell me, I'm not totally familiar with that. And maybe it's just I know the name, but I, or if I saw it, what is Zarafa about? So, what was it? What was it about? It was about a giraffe and this boy. Okay. I, I kind of forgot the plot, what the plot was, but I remember there was a giraffe inside of it. Okay. So so it came out a little while ago? Uh, what? Did you say? Uh, 2012. 2012. All right. So Rafa. I'll have to check that out, man. Interesting pick. Thank you, sir. All right. Next up, Claire. Looking? So, um, my favorite movie was Fantastic Mr. Fox, and it's by Roald Dahl. Oh, I love that one! They really made it with the texture and the warm colors. Yes. Yeah, that good. one was good. I've seen it. Good choice. Yay. Absolutely. That is a great film. Good choice, man. I love the description also. And I, isn't Fantastic Mr. Fox stop motion? Oh, I've read that book before. It's really good. Awesome. Good choice. All right, Scott, where are we headed to next? Next up is Sophie. Sophie, what film do you absolutely love the color in? Next Gen. Which one? Um, Next Gen. Next Gen? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that one because I'm not totally familiar with it. It's about this girl who finds a robot that um, escaped from a lab, and so she gets the robot to graffiti with her and like um, ditch school and stuff like that. So she has the robot be like really terrible and like help her like graffiti on signs and stuff. But I think it's really cool. And then um, she and the robot fight um, uh, army of robots. No kidding. So they end up they end up kind of teaming up to in a save the world type of deal. Yes. Pretty much. Well, when did that one? Neither city, at least. Right. So when did that? When did that film come out? I have no idea. That's okay. Very cool. All right. I think it's 2018. I'm not sure. I think it's 2018 or 19 because that's right. when I remember it. Fairly newer film. All right, I'll have to check that one out again. What was the name of that one again? Next Gen. Next Gen. All right. Uh, did you find it on like Netflix or something? Where'd you find yes, it? Yes, it's out on Netflix. Netflix. It is a Netflix original. Netflix original. All right, next gen. I'll have to check that out. All right, who's next, Scott? Christy is up next. Christy. Um, I like Zootopia. So, I agree. I love that film. I think it's pretty awesome. And would you like to hear a funny story about Zootopia? Scott, have I told the uh, holy crap I got into Disney Animation Studios? Yes, I think I did. I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, you've heard it already. But you've, I, told yeah. us, you've told us uh, three times. <laughs> I tend to retell the story. So real quick on Zootopia, because I don't... That Byron Howard, who is the director of that film, is uh, a big Chuck Jones fan, and he was influenced by Chuck and got to meet him. So look at that. Chuck Jones tied right into Zootopia. For those of you 
who don't know, and for most of you that do, because I like to repeat my stories. All right. Who else, Scott? Tater Tot. Tater Tot. I really like Sanjay's super team. Santa's it's super team? Sanjay's. Okay. Um, yeah. who, what, what studio did that film? Pixar. It's a small animated short film. Is it really? Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah I saw it. It's good. Years? I forget. All right. Well, yes. Okay. Um, all good choices. I'll have to. I remember Wait, this one's almost out of juice, dude. You're gonna have to Wait, go plug this in. That's not Barbie. Okay, that's fine. You need to go. You need to go plug that in. I know. You need to go plug that in. It's almost out of juice. All right. Good choices, guys. Does anybody else have a film, a favorite animated film, that they? I'm like, man, I just absolutely love the color in this thing. Here's Max. Max, what's up, dude? So I personally think The Incredibles has amazing, like, coloring skills. Like, yeah. I like um, the scene where, like, he's in the volcano with the robot. There's a lot of yellow, and uh, yellow is usually depicted as kind of, uh, like, alarming color. Um, one of the reasons why McDonald's has only red and yellow is because red, why they put it on stop signs and why blood is red, it's basically just an alarming color, and yellow is also, like, just a stressful color. Um, so they wanted to get you out of their restaurant. They didn't want you to stay and, like, chat for hours because they wanted more people to come in. Like, if it was full, they wanted more people to come. So they just didn't want, like, a bunch of people just staying there and talking and now they like they changed all their colors to like brown and green like starbucks because they want you to like hang out there now um but yeah they that's why it was like red and yellow is because and they just have like a lot of red and yellow a lot of blue and like sad scenes it's just like a really good coloring and uh sanjay's super team i think has like amazing coloring uh so i'd have to say those two those two all right so here's to, to piggyback off max here are color scripts from Incredibles. And here's the yep, scene. that's that's the one. That one is one of my like favorites. Right? So Brad Bird, the director of, he was the first non-Pixar guy to come in and do a film. And he pitched John Lasseter on this whole like scenario. And I love the design of it. It's that 50 style kind of uh, design which I absolutely love the angles and the, and the color, but you are correct, Max. I'll have to, I remember seeing Sanjay's Super Team, but, it, and I forget what film it was attached to, but I have not seen it since. So I will have to re-educate myself on a whole bunch of these films, like Next Gen and some of this other stuff. All right. So as we're working kind of color on our color scripts, again, I don't anticipate everybody finishing everything that we do each day because there's a lot to it, especially when you're making your own cartoon. So the more you can kind of get down and then build on it as you go. Here's Kat. Kat. Go ahead, Kat. So I thought of another one of like my favorite color scheme. Yes. And this is like a simple one. Uh, Elmo, I feel like that's just a lot of warm colors. Yes. Even though they're puppets. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, that's all right. You know what? They put, they, they attach colors to puppets for a reason to help um, accentuate their personality. So, nothing wrong there. Good job, Cap. So, I had another one of my all time favorite films, is, and it's really because of the animation, but I also love the color in it. Um, I love the tropical forest and, and that whole setup, but then that's where they, this film is where they first tried out deep canvas, which is this 3D technique was Tarzan in 1999. And it was the first, I was, an in, I was an intern down at Disney and I went to go see it when I came back. And I have Glenn Keane and his masterful animation of Tarzan and just uh, talk about when we talk about like the better you understand anatomy, the better you'll do at your drawing. Um, and if you're into animation, the way better you'll do at animation is take a look at the making of Tarzan and what Glenn Keane did 
uh, as far as anatomically for Tarzan to match up so that it looks, it feels real, <clears throat> even though it's a cartoon, it's still very believable. And what we're gonna work on, let me see if I can pull that up. What we're gonna work on later, uh, weeks is, I gotta see if it's in here. What we're gonna work on later in the upcoming weeks is how to draw real life stuff um, a little bit more too. It's a lot of fun and how we kind of translate that. So we did a little bit of that before. We're gonna do a little bit more of that because fundamentals are totally key. And let's see if I can, See if I can find that one picture of what Glenn Keane did where he put muscle mass over Tarzan. And you could see that Glenn Keane's understanding of anatomy was amazing. I don't know if it's in this book. Maybe it's not, I thought it was. So anyway, you get a chance. Tarzan and what Glenn Keane did is pretty darn cool. So here's a, just real quick. So here's a sketch, right? Glenn Keane, here's a character study of Glenn Keane. But if you look at how, like the lines are super simple, um, but look at how he uh, generates movement through his sketch lines and he wanted that kind of raw eight feel. So this is a great book too, if you get a chance, the making of Tarzan. Megan says Coraline. Coraline, ooh, that is a good one. That's a good one. That is a good one, I like that film. There's another, so I like Tim Burton. Um, does, is anybody a Nightmare Before Christmas fan? I've seen that movie. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's pretty darn awesome. Yes, big fan of that it's movie, wild. that is great. Yeah, right? uh, it's claymation, like the whole movie's made out of clay. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, sort of. So they made like, uh, they made maquettes and stuff and, and kind of like clay, it's, it's stop motion. So, um, you know, they, they molded their creatures and then they could bend oh, them. Oh, wait, oh, wait, uh, another, another clay nation is early man. Yeah, uh, a little soccer. Yeah. Okay. What's it called? Early man, it's about soccer and it's kind of funny. All right, it's called the early years. No, um, early man. Oh, early. Okay. To check that out too. There's another claymation I can think of. It's about these chickens who escape from a chicken farm. <laughs> chicken oh, chicken run. Chicken yes, run. chicken run. Exactly. Yeah. That, uh, by the same people who made um, the Wallace. early man. They also made Wallace and Gromit. They're, they have some good stuff. It's Artman Productions. Um, yeah. I think honestly, part. my favorite. Uh, like stop motion stuff besides Artman is, um, I think it's Leica Productions who made Coraline. They also made uh, Hugo and the Two Strings, which yeah. is amazing. I cannot believe how much stuff they managed to do with Claymation in that movie. It is so good. Cool. Um, if you guys haven't checked that one out, you guys should check that one out. That one's like insane. They're, they have a clay model in that movie that is bigger than a human. So... It's it's really good. It's a really good film. Um, and the like, two D the like clay animation is just absolutely stunning. So if you haven't seen that one, check that one out. That's really good. So this is the art of Kubo and the Two Strings, and it is an amazing film. And so to give you an idea of character design and what they pulled off the sets, because they built these giant sets to, it's I think. Max just mentioned that. Um, they built these giant sets, and I don't know if they have it in here, but you should definitely check out, like even look at just the design. So when we're talking about color scripting, right? How does the mood of the scene set? So this is more serene, right? Uh, it's as they're lighting these lanterns, and you kind of get an idea like uh, for the mood of things. This is obviously darker. Um, angles are kind of sharper, right? This is a little bit more tense. Um, if you get a chance, Kubo is a fantastic film, and I would have loved to play on the sets in that in that movie because they were huge. A couple people with their hands up. Gonna yes, go. Laura you go first. ahead and write them up. Um, I was gonna say that another one that has really good cover covers is Secret Life of Pets. Yes. 
right? There, there's a lot of and Secret Life of Pets too. Mm -hmm. So, what do you like about that film? Well, I like that they were saturating with colors, but they were still putting in fact that there was shading and that it needed to be needed to be dimensional, three dimensional. Sorry. Absolutely, and because it's kind of like a happier film. I mean, for the most part, it's got its moments, but it, there's a lot of joy and stuff in that film. Those colors are very vibrant. Super cool. Yep, Secret Life of Pets is yeah. fun. Here's Claire. Claire. What's up, dude? So, actually, I was working on right now, and I know how to share my screen now, so is it okay if I show you an example of that flower bag I yeah. found on my app? Yes. Actually, I didn't draw it, but let me share my screen. Is it working? Yep, it's working. Okay. So, there was one that... Like this one, I didn't make it, but it was with the um, app I was just starting. Yeah, I speeded it up. I have to edit. There you go. And then, like, like that one. This is what I found. Yep. So what's cool about that, and what we're going to be working on um, in the coming weeks, I think next week we'll start in on the bouncing ball is squash and stretch, which is what you're seeing there with the ball and the whole idea of um, when the ball, like it's not just a perfect circle the entire time. So depending on where it's at, uh, it, the ball is like stretching out or squashing, uh, showing a little bit more movement. We'll get into easing in and easing out also, which means it, it'll slow down as it approaches the top and then speeds up as it, Right down. All right. Here's so, Amin. Uh, what's that? Amin. Amin. Oh, um, well, I wasn't really going to share some art. It was about the Leica Productions. I went to their thing in San Diego, and the sets are still huge. There's like this one house scene in Hugo, and you can see how huge it is. It's just enormous. Gigantic? Like, could you, could you climb on it kind of a set? Yes, that's, that's how big the set is. That's awesome. All right, so all good suggestions. As I'm finishing up some of the colors, so even in my shadows, my shadows are a little bit more purpley, right? They're a little cooler, but they're more in those romantic tones because he's about to see his love of his life flower sack version and this is where my pinks and um you know softer yellows and that kind of thing are gonna come into play so this is kind of building up to that where you're just you're feeling warm about the character and then you get into the sweet mercy i'm in love flower sack all right so here's what we're gonna do we it's 250 already and i'm gonna say let's give it another few minutes and because we have a pretty healthy group again today I would like everybody who wants to share to get a time to share in about two minutes I'm going to start going around and you guys can share the progress so as you can see I've only got three frames done right as I'm kind of working through my stuff so I do not expect for you to have the entire thing finished but if you would like to share the progress of where you're at I would love to see it. I'm sure everybody else would love to see it. And we can spotlight you. And then again, as in uh, as what I set up at the front, if you guys want to, and I saw a couple come through while we were on, while I, when I mentioned it, if you would like to be involved in the art tag giveaway, like you can obviously play art tag and you don't have to sign up for the free stuff, but if you would like to be eligible for the raffle giveaway stuff which are i will do a sketch of any character that you want will be one or two of those i have a couple of custom comic-con shirts that we did with the uh, wiley cody in the bat suit and then i will be giving away one baby yoda print that i did which will also i will be using some pastels over it so it won't just be a print i'll have some embellishment done over the top 
And again, that's for Friday. It's on Friday's class. So if you go to chuckjonescenter.org, May week four, and then you go to my class on Friday, you'll see the um, you'll see the little registration form. It's super simple. I just need name, email, and address. And then did anybody, if, before I start calling people, did anybody get, I had a, quite a few kits that I sent out in the mail. Did anybody get their big draw kit? Yes, I got mine. You got one? I got mine. Sweet, Who's, who said that? Um, us. <laughs> okay, all right, good. I'm glad you got yours. I sent out quite a few. All right. I would like to share. Go ahead. She needs to start her video. Okay, there she is. So this is what I've been working on. Hang on, let me show you. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, here, this one. I've already finished the whole thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you put a lot of work into that. Well done, man. Good for you. I'm gonna I'm gonna give Claire a round of applause because that's awesome, man. Way to go. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, All right, go ahead and post a hand up. We're gonna go around the corner or around the table here and see what y'all have. Here's Soren. Soren. Hey buddy. Uh one minute. One minute. All right. Let's we'll go we'll back, back to Soren. Here's Kat. Cat. All right, let's see what you where you at, Kat. Let's see what you got. Okay, so I only I haven't even gotten the whole frame done because it took me a while to figure out like how to match the colors up to my pose drawing. Okay. So here is my half finished frame. And also what to do with like the wings because what I had previously done with cover color was of course the wings close together and these are apart. So it's hard to get that to figure out how to match it back. Awesome. Good job, dude. Keep going. You'll figure that part out and then it'll, it'll like figure out how that background looks just and you don't have to do super detail just as you pick your main colors. Nice job, Kat. All right, who else would like to show where they're at as we go around the table? I think Soren's ready. All right, Soren's ready. So I stapled mine, but I kind of like had to rip off the staples, but I couldn't. So yeah. So I have three parts in my store. Here's part one where they see the crew sees UFOs and escapes, tries to escape. Then in part two, Tyler's car blows up, explodes because it just got hit by a laser. Wow. So then he, Tyler runs because he's near the Grav's garage. In one minute, you're... Okay. That's pretty intense, man. And, oops, I accidentally colored him pink. I, was, meant, I meant to color him yellow, and then he basically... And then he basically reaches the garage, and he has another car. So he had an old-school Ferrari. He was in a Ferrari 250 GT. So let me show you what it looks like. Not what I do. Like, it, in real life, it looks like this. Sweet. Now, I got this book from my school library, and then I drew a Ferrari Testarossa for him, which looks like this. Not and he's Ferrari Redhead, but it's a Ferrari 1512 TR to be exact. And then he's in his Testarossa here. Awesome, man. Good job. Keep going. And then part three, well, it's blank because I didn't do anything. That's okay. You'll and so in part two, the first page is to color an explosion because this car basically blew up. Okay. That's my story. Awesome job, dude. Thank you, sir. All right, where are we going next? Tater Tot? Tater Tot. Hello? 
Well, I only got one done. Well, I mean, you got a lot in there. You talking about you just got the one frame done? No, I just got the one page done. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, you got more than one frame. Um, awesome. So can Thank you, you. you hold it back just a tad and then go up a little bit so I can see those other frames. Up a little bit more. A little bit more. There you go. Sweet. I love the fact that you did notes on the side too. That helps with the action. Especially Thank you. Finding stuff. Nice job, man. So you're keeping it like, that's what I'm saying. Like you keep it kind of basic and what we're doing, we're not doing a ton of detail to it. We're just getting an idea of what the mood is. Nice job, Tater Top. Thank you. In, in cricket, would that be considered a, what, what, do you, what do you consider like a, is it a home run? Uh, I don't know the official name from it. It's just like a score or something. <laughs> Right. I don't know. <laughs> well, you did really well in cricket. Let's let's play. You got all the way around and you made a score. Well done, sir. Yeah. I'll have to, I'm gonna have to find out. All right, okay. Sophie. Here's Sophie. Okay, um, so I'm not good at drawing objects, so I decided to draw this. I'm not done yet. I didn't draw his hair. All right. He's just sitting there meditating. That's cool. So is this a character of your own creation? No, I got him off this book. <gasps> Ooh. So what's that story about? Um, it's actually just a bunch of fairy tales, and this is just how the cover looks. Okay, that's cool, man. But they're retold, so they're sarcastic. <laughs> I love those. I like reading Shakespeare Star Wars, if you've ever read that. That is hilarious. No, I've never read Shakespeare Star Wars. It's good. Uh, All right. Shakespeare. Very cool design, man. Thank you. All right, here's Caden. Caden. So this is, I'm not going to show my storyboard. Okay. So, yeah, there you go. Hold up a little closer. All right, nice. Sweet. So, there we go. See the truck and then hold it up a little bit more. There you are. Well done. Did you do all that today? Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's impressive, man. Good job, Caden. Keep going, buddy. You can fill that whole thing out. You got that. Well done, sir. Here's a meme. Meme. Oh, okay. So I listened to the song. I thought this sounds like Invader Zim. So I thought, why don't I make Invader Zim storyboard about song? So I have this. I this is a mistake. Dude, the drawings are awesome. And then I was I saw the next panel full screen because okay, uh, so working on it. That's all right, dude. That's looking great. You nailed the character design. I'm not good at drawing a figure, Zim. No, you did fine, dude. I think you don't under, undersell yourself. That looks awesome. Aha! You did get the kits. Yes! The Acme Disintegrator. Wow, man. You guys went to town on that. That is gorgeous. Yeah. I love it. I am super impressed, man. I am super impressed. All right. You guys want to show My your? My sister has one too. Whoa! You got that is insane. Look at that. <laughs> I love it. That looks amazing. Oh. Did you guys have fun with those? Because they look. They look <laughs> funny. I forgot where mine is, but um, I I I don't know where mine is, but but um. You want to show us Not yet. <laughs> All right, that's okay. We can come back. Awesome job, ladies. All right, thank you. Next up is Heather Rose and Liliana. All right, Heather Rose. All right, and then, ladies, I'm going to answer Lorenzo and Evie's question right after that. So let's go to Liliana and Heather Rose first. Wow, look at that. Love the colors. Love how you're wrapping it out. Is that all done today? Yeah. Wow, and you're quick. Very cool. I dig it. 
<gasps> Look at those. I, so I'm not going to assume. Is that an explosion in the first frame? Oh, that looks so good. Man, you two did a killer job, man. I'm digging the colors. I didn't color the second storyboard yet. but That's, that's okay. I love how the first one's coming out. That's looking killer, man. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, come back to me real quick, Scott. Okay, so um, we'll we'll continue around the around the table here. So Lorenzo and Evie asked for the art tag prizes. Will I draw any Looney Tunes character or any character? Period. I will draw. We're going to keep this in the Chuck Jones world. So any Looney Tunes character, right? You can pick if you win, and I will draw it on 12F animation paper and send that to you. So hopefully that answers your question, Lorenzo and Evie. Tater Todd, do I do commissions? Um, I haven't yet, but I'm, I'm about to get started on that this summer as I launch Bionic Squirrel for real. Um, all right, so where are we going next, Scott? Samantha. Okay, so um, for my first page, this is it. Ooh, look at that. No. Is that all today? Yep. Oh, you guys are fast, man. Oh, I love that. That looks awesome. And you got into page two. Super cool, man. I love how your storyboards are coming out, too. That's going to be a good story. Did you, hey, did you, did you see, like, Short Circuit yet? No, I have <laughs> not yet. I'm sorry. That's right. I'm only going to ask once a week. I'm only going to ask once a week. Yesterday was my no tech day, so I mean. I hear you. Well, it was a gorgeous day out. So no, your stuff's looking awesome, man. Love the boards and the color. Those Thank are looking you. great. All right, real quick to answer Lillian and Heather Rose. If you go on to Friday's class where you see what we're doing for Friday, there's a little form on there, and that's where it'll explain. Just fill this out, name, uh, you know, with your parents' permission if you're under uh, if you're under 18. And uh, you can fill out the little form, name, address, email, that's all you need. And uh, I would sign up for each one of you because you don't want to sign up together. You want to sign up for each one of you. You can use the same email address. It's not a big deal. But that way, each one of you is entered to do it. And, yeah, so there's, I think Scott just put it in the in the uh, chat. So you click on that link, it'll take you right to the to the class for the form for me. All right, Scott, where are we going next? Simeon. Simeon. Okay, so this is my color, uh, color script. This is when I started. Oh, sweet. Thank you. That looks awesome, man. I love the sketches too. Thank, thank you. Um, this is my other one. All right. Can you hold it up just a little bit more so I can see that bottom frame too? There you go. That's awesome. Wait, was that today you did this whole thing? What? Uh, you guys get more done than I do. It's it's awesome. <laughs> Very good, Simeon. Nice job, man. Thank right, you. Right. Going to Elite. What's up, buddy? Okay. Um, so, so here I have the story. This is like a vampire that I drew with the mohawk. Yeah. And an alien in the middle of nowhere. A submarine and um, an FBI sniping a zombie. Wow, dude, that's awesome. I love the color in that also. Well done, dude. You kept it you kept it simple and to the point with the color. Translates well, man. Thank you. Okay. Alright, Scott, where are we headed? Back to Soren. Soren. So uh I just want to show my story again. So so, and this time I'll tell. So, there, at the beginning, it says there's a UFO, and, there, and there's, like, the crew and stuff, and then they see the UFOs again, their cars, and then they start escaping, and 
And uh, then Tyler's car explodes, so he runs to the garage and gets his Ferrari to Sarasa. And I, like, kind of rip the staples off with the stapler because it has, like, this thingy on the back that helps to, like, rip staples off. And I wanted you guys to see, like, the full exhaust of the Tesla. So the Tesla is actually a four exhaust, two on each side. But I couldn't do it in 3D, so I just threw two, one, two on each, one side. Okay, that's cool, man. Nice job. But it was pretty hard. And I put the stables and sound on the sides on the top. Okay, that's all right. Good job, dude. Nice job, Soren. Okay, so um, as I glisten here, because it's 85 degrees out, I didn't turn the air on in the studio. Um, I'm going to close it out today and say um, Mike Funt is on tomorrow with clown school and i believe it's exaggerations is what he's doing and lee is in doing what is she doing like sunken treasures right scott yeah sunken treasures she's doing some wicked stuff with that whole theme of things and then lee and i will be back thursday and friday and like i said a lot of scott a day you go on i did a little video for scott to introduce a lot of scott a day so we're going to do a lot of scott a day on thursday and then friday is ultimate r tag three you get the keep Keep on giving. Remember, just register yourself um, with your parents' permission if you're under 18. And it's going to be five people at random that will pick for prizes and then send stuff out. So have a great afternoon, everybody. Excellent job today. You got bye, a lot done. And bye. Good job, bye. yes. Bye. Thank you, son. You got a lot done in a short amount of time. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.